Hello everyone. I am Nidhi Sharma and I am going to take your lecture on this new concept called GI that is geographical indications. As I am talking to you people, I am pretty sure that most of you are not aware of this new concept called GI. But let me tell you this, that this is an interesting concept and the class is also going to be an interesting class. There were other IPRs also prior to the coming of this new term called GI, which were granted protection at both national and international levels. Those include patent laws, trademark laws, copyright laws. But this is a new emerging concept and this has been recently added to the realm of IPR by way of inclusion into the TRIPS agreement of WTO, that is the agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. So in today's class, we will broadly be covering the meaning of the concept and the historical background as to how the concept has evolved over the period of time. But before the discussion of the meaning of the word geographical indications, we should first go back to the pre-GI scenario. That time when the word geographical indications did not even existed. When the word did not existed, what was exactly the law or what exactly the terms coined that time which granted protection to the agricultural products and other industrial properties? Let's discuss them in brief now. There are number of treaties which are administered by an organization called WIPO. That is World Intellectual Property Organization. But I am pretty sure that most of you are not aware of the working of this particular organization or might not even heard of this. Let me just give you a brief about this organization. World Intellectual Property Organization is an organization which came into existence through a convention. It works in twofold manner. As the name itself suggests, firstly, it takes care of the intellectual property rights worldwide. It has the work of protection of all the intellectual property rights worldwide. Secondly, it makes sure that all the intellectual property unions which have been created under the treaties which are administered by the organization itself, they work in a harmonious manner. World Intellectual Property Organization has recently granted protection to this new concept which we are discussing here called GI, that is Geographical Indication. But first we have to discuss the international framework of intellectual property laws to understand what exactly were the protection granted to the industrial properties. For that, we have to go to pre-GI scenario as we have earlier discussed. Now we will discuss about the Paris Convention of 1883. This particular convention had originally 11 signatories. Now the number has increased to 171 member countries. This is the first multilateral agreement which provided protection to two things. First, indication of source and second, appellation of origin. You must be thinking what the two term means. Let's discuss about these two terms. We we'll first discuss about indication of source. Indication of source as you understand from the name itself, it is the indication for the consumers that 
this particular product is produced or processed in this particular area or region. So it is just an indication for consumers to tell them from where the product is produced or processed. Like you all must have heard about the taglines which are written on certain products like for example toys or watches it is written on them made in Italy or made in China or the Swiss watches contain Swiss made. So these are the indications which are telling the customers that this product is processed and produced in this particular area. Now we will discuss the second term which is called appellation of origin. Appellation of origin is also a kind of geographical indication only. This existed prior to the coming of this new concept called GI. These appellations of origin sometimes include geographical name, sometimes traditional uh, logos or traditional designs which are used on products having special or specific unique attribute which are due to that particular geographical area or region from where the product is coming or from where the product is processed or produced. We will discuss this term with the help of few famous examples. Let's discuss them. The first example is about feta cheese. Now feta is a kind of salty cheese which is prepared specifically in area of Greece. How it was prepared? It was prepared with the help of milk of sheep and goat. Now it was a big task for the Greece to achieve the certificate of appellations of origin for this particular product. But we will discuss about the conflict later on when we will come on that part. Another example is Procuro di Parma that is Parma ham. It is a kind of ham which is prepared and produced in the province of Parma. That is the north central, central Italy. It is used and it is prepared with the help of the pigs which specially graze in that particular area of Parma. And that's how it got the name Parma ham. It is an indication for the consumers to know that this particular variety of ham is coming from the region of Parma and must be having some special attributes or uniqueness which makes it different from the other kind of hams. Each step from the production, breeding and final packaging, only the institute of Parma Qualita can qualify that this particular ham can be named as Parma ham or not. The third and famous example we all must have heard about and you must be liking it too much that is tequila. Tequila from Mexico. Now tequila is a kind of liquor which is governed by federal regulations which define where it can be made, where the plants called agave plants can be grown from which the sugars are extracted to prepare this particular liquor called tequila. What has to be stated on the bottle or what has to be stated on the label, where it can be bottled and how much content can be produced and from what percentage of the sugars which are extracted from those agave plants 
in preparation of this particular liquor called tequila. So the word tequila, now you will be knowing that this particular liquor called tequila is coming from the region of Mexico. And it is produced specially from the agave plants from where those plants which actually grow in that particular area only. Another famous example is champagne. Now we all know about champagne, what it is. So let me just give you a brief about the word champagne. Champagne is a village in France region. Champagne also received its name from that particular area only. It is a sparkling wine which is prepared from the grapes grown in the particular region of France which is called by the name Champagne. We'll discuss about the conflicts and controversies related to these famous appellations of origin as we move forward with our discussion.